What up everyone, welcome back to the channel and I'm here to answer one of the most frequently asked questions I get. Okay, so let's talk about this. One of the most frequently asked questions is what cameras do I use? What editing system do I use? Kind of like, how do I produce the videos? Which I almost feel bad saying it's a production, but I guess at the end of the day, it kind of is, but before I say anything, always remember this. I don't, I have no clue what, what I'm talking about. And if I did, my videos would probably be a lot better. But let's just get right into it. And I'll show you the camera that I used pretty much for the entire 2020 season. It was a pretty big upgrade from the camera I used before that. I started with the Canon M50, which is pretty much known as like the best bang for your buck. It is only $600 and for that price it can do pretty much everything most people would ever need. At least people that don't need that much. It, it, it has great quality, great autofocus, it has all the little things you would need to start a channel. If you pair it with a good lens it can. it's probably a really good camera. But for a couple of reasons I upgraded. This is right here, the Sony a6600 and one of the main selling points was actually the battery life. That was my biggest complaint about the M50 and these Sony, uh, Sony batteries, they come with these, I think they're called Z batteries or something and you just slide them right in here and the battery life is just unbelievable. Like three to four, sometimes even five hours, depending on how often you have to start recording or turn the camera on. But I would go sometimes two or three vlogs on one battery, which is insane. Like comparing that to the camera that I'm using right now, I, I'll get back to that later in the M50, it's, it's just a whole different world. So I would never have to worry about battery life. It was so amazing. I would have to need one, one battery. Sometimes I would bring a backup battery, but that was always one thing that stressed me out the most is carrying extra batteries and making sure everyone is charged because the worst feeling is going out there and noticing, damn, we have no battery life. That's pretty much a miserable day. So, and a big another plus is when I would attach my monopod or tripod to the camera down here, you can see that this little door for the battery is still accessible with the tripod on the camera. And if every time you want to change the battery or the SD card or anything, and you have to take break down your entire setup, that is just very, very annoying. So I love the way they built this camera. It's always the big question, what's better, Sony or Canon? At least that was the big question that most people were debating online when I was doing the research on what new camera I wanted. I think this camera is about Fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars. This came with this lens that I never really changed. This is an eighteen to one thirty-five millimeter lens. That basically just means how far zoomed in it'll be, and it'll zoom in from eighteen. And eighteen is like good enough to vlog, so I can have the selfie style, like right here, a bit further from my face, and talk to the camera, and like my face and my upper body would still be in frame. I wish it was a bit wider, but I don't really understand the technology behind that anyway. But the, the fact that this can zoom all the way up to 135, I think for a disc golfer, this is pretty close to the perfect lens, at least what is available right now, if you don't have a catch cam, because you can actually zoom in pretty nicely and pretty far with this camera. The autofocus for Sony, they use slightly different technologies compared to Canon and I found that Sony is a bit better. I kind of like the image a bit better and I, the focusing system, I like a bit better on Sony. I'm sure Canon lovers would full-heartedly disagree with that. And I don't really, I don't really care. For me, the Sony has been kind of more fun to work with, but also it is more than twice as expensive. So that was the biggest downfall to this camera is probably the price. If you would know what you were doing, this camera was probably like one of the best all-arounders on the market, I'd say. And I would just pair it with this Rode uh, Pro Video Pro Mic Plus, 
which is just a shotgun mic on top. I think you've seen any vloggers you see set up like this. It is pretty much the most expensive mic you can get. I think it's like $250-ish. Um, and I just really wanted good audio. And I, I'm still not that happy with my audio, but I think I would have to like actually study on how to level things out properly and how to use this microphone. It also has a bunch of different buttons back here that I have no clue how to use or what they do. But, you know, it is what it is. I tried. But let me show you my other camera that I've been using for Vlogmas and that I think is very close to the perfect vlogging camera. This is the Sony ZV-1. And I had some slight focusing issues as you may have seen if you've watched all my videos with this camera and I think it was my mess up. I don't think it was the camera's fault. I think I had one setting um, in the camera on the focusing mode. I had it like mixed up and I had it on centered and not on wide. So it would always try to focus on the center of the screen, which is fine if I'm in the center. But uh, when me and Natalia were in front of the camera, the center was the background. And I think that's kind of what messed it up. So what this camera is so awesome at is its size is so compact, so light, so small. It, sh it can shoot 4K as well. I use 1080p, but it can do slow-mo. It actually has a high frame rate option as well, where you can go up to like 960 frames per second, I think, which is insane. It has a built-in microphone that is much better than most cameras come with. And it also comes with this little dead cat. You can just snap it on top and now you have a little wind protector for the camera. My least favorite part about this is probably that it only comes with one lens and you can never change it. So this lens is attached and it has some little zoom you can use here, which is almost pointless, but basically it is awesome. And the biggest bonus to what this camera does is this. Oh my God, a flip out screen that has been almost unheard of for the Sony A series. Um, all these Sony cameras have the flip up screen, which as you can see, if you have a microphone on top, is extremely pointless. So the selling point for this camera, which is about $700, was the flip out screen, the size, the good inbuilt audio, it also has an inbuilt st stabilization system, which is pretty good. And the quality of what this tiny little camera can do is just absolutely insanely good. Kind of if you know what you're doing. Okay, I forgot to mention the worst part about it, the battery life. So th this is actually a, a different brand battery that I just bought on Amazon. But the batteries in this camera are so small, if you compare them to the other Sony, like, <laughs> it's just it's just a completely different story. And these only last like 45 minutes to an hour, which is very annoying. I have three of these and I've been charging them like crazy, switching them in and out multiple times a day. And it's just been extremely annoying. And if I have my monopod or tripod attached, I can't reach the battery or the SD card. And now you have an external mic, which is definitely better than the inbuilt microphone. The inbuilt one is pretty good, but I think this definitely makes a difference. This is just a smaller, I think it's called the Compact or Rode Mini or something, I forget what it's called. But basically this would be my setup for most of Vlogmas. Right now I'm just filming on my phone, but it's a cute little setup, I think. And I would highly recommend this video but you have to figure out the focusing systems. But all in all, this camera is absolutely amazing. To edit, I am using a MacBook Pro that I bought about two and a half years ago. And all it is, is right here, iMovie and let, you, let me take you right into it. Okay, so we are here in my iMovie. And basically, so if you have a camera and you record on a camera, not on your phone, you'll need something that looks kind of like this. This is an SD card. Um, this is a 64 gigabyte that I use. It's pretty much enough for what I do. I never really fill them up anyway. Um, I gotta empty them about once a week. And you just pull all this stuff onto your 
computer or laptop, whatever, and then you have all your files right here in your My Movie section in the My Media, and you can just pull them and pretty much put it wherever you want in the video. Here you can add music. The way I have this set up is if I drag this down a bit, ooh, right here, look. This is my end screen right here that I can just pull right into here. And this is my intro that I can just pull in. This is the intro song. This is the slow-mo montage song. This is the outro song. So it's very, very easy to set up. All I gotta do is pull this down and then I can always add it in right here. And then I just add the music and switch it up a bit. It's really easy to mess around with how you can like change the volume of stuff. You can change the volume of your clips. And then basically it's just editing. If you wanna add like a little thing, what I did here with the Dave Tilly, you just go here to titles. You can choose what kind of title you want and just pull it down, pull it into. So iMovie is obviously very basic, very simple. You can't really do that many things, but I've never wanted or needed to learn anything else and so on and so forth. It's really just a super easy, super, I think good enough way um, to edit videos. But moving forward, I think I'm definitely, I'm gonna try to upgrade my editing skills or even hire an editor that will probably work with Final Cut Pro or uh, whatever other more professional options there are. All right, let me quickly show you how to make a thumbnail and the apps I use. Number one, I use Photoshop Mix and I use Photoshop Express. These are two very simple apps, they're free. You can buy upgrades, but I never really needed them. So in Photoshop Mix, I kind of use this app um, to layer multiple images and cut images out. It's pretty simple. Like you can see here, this is actually four images here right next to each other. And one is Casey that I can move around. You can change where you want the image to be layered. So if I, wanted it, if I want Casey in front of the tree, now Casey's in front of the tree. If I choose me right here and go on cut out, you can see that the original picture, if I add the whole picture, was actually this. So it was just me posing in front. And then if you choose the cutout option and go to subtract, then I can cut out the entire background in the smart option. It, it kind of just adapts to the colors around. I think sometimes you have to zoom in a bit more. Um, but all in all, this is actually extremely easy. So once I'm happy with whatever layers I have, I go back and I go to Photoshop Express, which I use for cropping, adding a filter and adding text. Very, very simple app. I usually start with the crop. So I go over to crop, choose social media, scroll all the way over to YouTube th th thumbnail. And then it gives me the exact dimensions I need um, that the YouTube thumbnail needs. And you know, Thumbnails are key. Then I would go to looks. I would always choose HDR as my main filter. And then there's four options, unless you pay extra money to get the pro version, then there's more options. But you can see HDR one makes it very, very bright. HDR two kind of makes it like soft and softer edges. HDR three um, changes it yeah, slightly brighter than HDR one, HDR four. This one actually gave it a cool looking feeling. So from here, it goes to here. It just makes it look way more appealing, I think. And uh, I think I chose this one for the actual video yesterday. Then I would go to text and I would choose B2 and just, I think I called this elbow rehab. And then I have it right here and you can slide it around wherever you want. You can make it bigger or smaller and you can turn it however you want. I think I put it down here in this corner. This is not very straight right now, but then you can change the color of it. I usually go yellow with a black stroke. You can change how fat you want your stroke as well. And then this would kind of be, at the end of the day, this would be a thumbnail. You just go here and load it to your camera roll, airdrop it to your laptop, and you are done and have successfully uploaded a YouTube video. And that's pretty much it. That's the cameras I use, that's the apps I use. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope someone who wanted to know this feels like now he knows. And guys, thanks for watching. I'm really excited for the next couple of videos coming up. 
um, because I'll have a special guest. And I'll see you tomorrow with a friend. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.